Blender can be used to create various overlays that can be applied in other video editing softwares to create amazing transitions. In today's video, we're going to learn one such transition, which is a really simple setup that can yield really cool results. If you do want to have maybe more videos that have compilations of these different transitions, let me know and I'll definitely create that. But today's is gonna to be sweet and short, so let's go ahead and create this particular transition video. For the setup, in our default scene, we'll go ahead and tap X to delete the default cube. Then we'll press Shift A and search for a mesh plane, and that is going to be the base on which we're going to do our effects. We can scale the plane up by five, we don't necessarily have to, but I'll leave it as is for now. Then we'll select our camera, press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, followed by G Z to lift it up on the Z axis. Then we can press zero to go into our camera view, and then we'll go ahead and select the default light either from our viewport over here, or we can just select it from the outliner present in the top right and just press delete to delete it. Then we'll switch our viewport shading to rendered so that we can actually see the changes that we make. We'll go to our world and just change this down all the way to black. And then with the actual plane selected, we'll go ahead and give it a new material. Then we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and switch this to the shader editor. Then we'll press zero on our numpad to go back into our camera view. And with the camera selected, we'll just go to viewport display and increase pass part two all the way to one. Then with the plane selected, we'll go ahead and select the principled PSDF and tap X to delete it. Then we'll press shift A and search for an emission shader. Now this emission shader is essentially the only shader we need. We're just gonna increase the strength to about five so that it becomes a pure white. And in fact, you can go to the color management and change this from filmic to standard so that we get actual whites and actual blacks. Now the color is going to be driven by a color ramp, which we can actually manipulate to get various different color outputs. But for the time being, we're going to use just black and white. So we'll change this from linear to constant and we'll bring the white in by just a little bit. Now we need to actually control the factor. And for that, we're going to use a Voronoi texture as well as a wave texture. So this Voronoi texture, when plugged into the factor, should give us some type of circles. We can get the circles by either moving this particular slider in or by changing the scale up and down over here. So right now, the circles are fairly random and that's because the randomness is set all the way to one on our Voronoi texture. So let's go ahead and reduce the randomness all the way to zero and we just get these circles. Let's bring this back to something like that. And now we actually want to control the position of this factor using another wave texture. So let's search for the wave texture. And now if we just control shift click it with the node wrangler enabled, you should be able to see how the waves are. We don't want so many waves to be present. We just want one single wave that actually goes all the way through this entire screen. So let's reduce this scale down to something like 0.1. And now you can see by playing around with the face offset, we get complete white over here and we get complete darkness over here. So that is essentially what we're getting. And that is exactly what we want. So let's now go ahead and add this into this particular Voronoi texture before it goes into the color ramp. So let's search for a math node, plug that in right over here and just add in this wave texture value. And now when we actually go ahead and look at the output from our emission shader, this wave texture is adding to the Voronoi texture before it goes into the factor of the color ramp. By playing around with this phase offset, you can see how we're able to get an area of complete white and we're able to get an area of complete black. Now I think that there's too much white for like too long and there's even black for too long. So to reduce that, we can just change this scale from 0.1 to maybe 0.2. And now you should see that there just should be a little area with white and a little area with black. So right now the black is non-existent because see the best situation, we still have some white on this side and white on this side as well. We can change that by just sliding in this slider by a little bit. And now we have just a tiny bit of black and that's when the actual transition will happen and the rest of it is white. And even the white doesn't stay for too long. As you see, it's staying only from a value of maybe 31.9 to a value of something like 32.9. So that's just one single unit, which is good enough. But again, if you want to reduce that as well, you can start increasing this by maybe just a little bit more 0.22 and things like that, just so that you get much lesser white. And you have to ensure that the black also comes in for a while as well. I'm going to leave it at 0.2 and I'm going to play around with the face offset. Now, if you just want this to be the animation where it just continuously runs up and down, what you could do is you can add in another math node and you can switch this over from add to modulo. And for the modulo, you're going to have to choose truncated modulo and set this value at something like two. And now if you were to just keep this timeline as long as you want it and just play the animation with this phase offset continuously changing, you should have it continuously repeating. To get the phase offset to continuously change, you can add in a driver by typing in hash 
frame, which is going to give the frame number and just divide it by some value. So let's say hash frame divided by 10. And now you're just going to get a linear motion where this becomes black and white and black and white again and again. So that is something that you could do if you wanted to. And in fact, you can always play around with the scale of this to get smaller circles, bigger circles and things like that. It's really up to you and your preference. But right now I'm going to keep the scale at 10 itself and I am going to make it such that we don't actually have a driver but we have keyframes and we loop so that we can render one particular loop. So I'm going to keep it at 180 frames and I'm going to right click and choose delete driver. Now I'm going to remove this truncated modulo because we do not need it if we are keyframing the perfect values. Then I'm going to go to my output properties and change the frame rate to 60 frames per second and the resolution to 200% so that we get a 4K render. Then I'll change the file format to FFmpeg video with the encoding changed from Matroska to MPEG4 and an output quality of Percepci lossless. The output folder can be wherever you want it to be. Double slash will store it in the same folder in which your blend file is saved so ensure you save your blend file now on frame zero i'm going to keep this phase offset at some value such that the entire thing is black or i'll change it such that the entire thing is white so right now I have it such that no area is completely white. I'll change that by just bringing this back a bit. And now I'll hover over the face offset and I'll just tap I and I'll select this particular wave texture so that I can see the keyframes down here. Then I'll go to frame 180 and I'll add in a value of 2 pi over here. So I'll just type the same 64 and then press plus and type in TAU, which is equivalent to 2 pi. So then when I hit enter, we should reach the next value where this perfectly loops and I'll go ahead and tap I. So now the default is set to Bezier, which is exactly how I want it so that it starts off slow, speeds through the middle area and slows down again at the end. So this is what I currently have. And that looks great. But again, I feel like the scale is a bit too large. So let's just make it 15. And now I think that looks great. Since I don't have an area with complete black, I'm going to have to play around with the values until I get something that I am satisfied with. That might require me to actually play around with the scale of the wave texture as well. If you feel like, yes, there's way too much white and there's very little black, the other thing that you could do is add in another color ramp node right after the wave texture and bring the black in by a little bit. So that way you'll get more area as black and this is the animation that you get. You can always change this from linear to ease as well and this is the animation that you get. Now there's many ways in which you can actually use this. First off, if you just keep it as black and white, you can use a luma key to actually remove any one of these colors and make it transparent so that you can reveal whatever video is going on in the back. On the other hand, if you want to use a chroma key or in Premiere Pro, you'd be using the ultra key, you can actually change this white to maybe a green value and that way you can just key out this particular green. So that's something else that you can do. But another fun thing that you can do is add in another stop over here and change this to a complete white. So now again, you'd have to play around with exactly how much of white you want, but you can have these circles actually come in with a little white border, which also might really add to the effect. So that's really up to you as to how you want to render this out and what stylistic preferences you require. But if you want to know how you can use this particular animation to create a transition in the Blender's video sequencer, let me know and I'll definitely create a video on that as well. But until then, if you're happy with everything, you can go ahead and press render animation. I hope this was a fun tutorial and you learned quite a bit from it. Remember, you don't have to use the Voronoi texture. You could be using the noise texture and maybe you could use other forms of the Voronoi texture such as Chevy Chef to get square transitions and things like that. There's a lot of things to play around with and a lot of things to try and create. So do play around with this and I hope you come across something that you find super unique and extremely cool. I am trying to post videos every single day. So until my next video comes out, hopefully tomorrow, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.